Yeah, it's fascinating and fascinating to be here in Berlin talking to so many people about what's going on in this market right now. We're seeing private equity actually in a period of coming out of some downturn. We, we had such a high high in 2021 in tech amongst other areas. And most areas of investing have seen drops actually each year since 21. But now in 2024, we're seeing some leveling out. It looks like we've reached the bottom of that and things are beginning to pick up. But most people are not expecting a very rapid pickup. They're expecting a pickup towards the end of this year and going into next year. So not a sudden swing. Yeah, there hasn't been a lot of deal making. Um, will that change uh, in your view and also what like, people are telling you? Probably not that fast, but yes, we, we see things picking up. I think the uncertainty that's around with elections, with macro issues around conflicts and other things are causing people to be a little bit careful. We've got so much money in the industry as well. As you know, there's 3.9 trillion of dry powder in the industry still to be invested. Uh, there's 3.2 trillion of assets owned by private equity. That's a lot of money that LPs feel is committed one way or another into the private equity industry. And they're waiting to see some of that clear before they commit more money in, which means in a place like this where GPs are out talking to LPs about securing new commitments, it's probably as tough as it's been to, to do that. Um, let's also talk about the exits, because there clearly is a lack of exits, and that is why there is sort of like a lack of dynamism in the industry. Um, why don't they tap more the public market? Because equity markets are really so going so well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. E exits are what's required to lubricate this market. The LPs want to get money back before they're going to commit more money. And GPs are working really hard at, uh, at their exit strategies. Obviously, they're looking to other GPs to potentially provide routes for that, so secondary transactions. Um, but they're also looking at the, at the public markets. There have been a few IPOs, but it's very, very thin there. But then strategics, I think there's a big hope that there will be more activity from strategic acquirers. Though at the moment, that hasn't shown through any stronger than uh, activity from, from other GPs. But I think with markets high, with, uh, with strategics having quite high cash balances, we'd probably expect more activity from strategics, particularly in some sectors. Um, why are strategics still holding back? It's probably the same set of factors that means that, uh, that G investment committees of GPs are being a little bit, a little bit careful. Uh, with so much uncertainty around what's going to happen in macro, what's going to happen with elections, what's going to happen to interest rates, people are just being careful. They're working extra hard. Their diligence is probably turning more pages, uh, turning over more stones than ever before. And, uh, and they're going to make sure that the investments that they make in this market are good investments. Uh. What kind of return levels are they still targeting? We, we were making that joke every year. Um, well, it's called super return. Is there still super return? Are there still super returns? Yes, there's still, still super returns. The great thing about the private equity industry is it does still deliver. Uh, and that's why people keep coming back for more. It does deliver in terms of a superior rate of return to that which you'll be getting in, in the public markets. And if you're able to pick the very best GPs to put your money in, you're going to get significantly more than that. So, yes, super returns is probably still a fair title. But is it as easy now to get a 20% plus return? Probably not. But people are still targeting it.